So today I'm going to talk about feline immunodeficiency virus. Uh, so what is FIV? FIV is a complex retrovirus that's similar to HIV. So similar to the way HIV can lead to AIDS, FIV can cause immunodeficiency disease in domestic cats. Uh, immunodeficiency is the medical term that describes the body's inability to develop a normal immune response. So symptoms of FIV, uh, retroviruses insert copies of their genetic material into the cat's DNA, which means that they are infected for life and they cannot clear the virus from their body. But FIV is slow moving and may take months or years to incubate. So the virus typically lies dormant in the body before causing symptoms. Uh, cats who are infected with FIV may not show symptoms for several years and often have a normal life expectancy. Uh, however, they are prone to developing secondary infections and even certain types of cancer. Um, especially during the advanced stages of the disease. So symptoms usually occur due to the body's decreased ability to develop a normal immune response against infections. Uh, they may include recurrent minor illnesses, especially in relation to upper respiratory and uh, gastrointestinal. Um, so mild to moderately enlarged lymph nodes are also a symptom, inflammation of the gums and oral tissues upper respiratory tract disease, including inflammation of the nose and eyelid tissues, eye disease, including inflammation of the cornea and iris, and glaucoma, and long-term non-responsive or recurrent infections of the external ear and skin, uh, resulting from bacterial or fungal infections, fever, weight loss, and weakness, especially in advanced stages of FIV, uh, cancer, and in particular, lymphoma, which is a cancer of the white blood cells, formed in lymphoid tissues throughout the body and they can also suffer from nervous system abnormalities including abnormal sleep pattern, behavioural changes such as pacing and aggression and changes in vision and hearing. So causes and risk factors. So, um, so cause and risk factors, FIV transmission requires close contact because it is passed from cat to cat by infected saliva. Uh, bite wounds and scratches are the most common method of infection. Less commonly, the virus can be passed from a pregnant female to her kittens. Um, so sexual transmission is rare, although studies have detected the virus in semen. Um, because FIV spreads directly from cat to cat through the saliva, the infection is most likely to occur in outdoor male cats, as they are more likely to fight and roam. Uh, indoor cats generally have an extremely low risk of contracting HIV-IF. Um, so, the diagnosis. So, the average age of cats when diagnosed with FIV is uh, five years, um, and the likelihood <coughs> of infection increases with age. Uh, if FIV infection is suspected, your veterinarian will want to perform a thorough physical exam on your cat. Uh, they'll take into account the background history of symptoms and possible incidents that might have led to this condition. The next step is to test for uh, FIV using an enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay. This type of test is also known as a SNAP test and can be formed in the vet clinic and works by screening for FIV-specific antibodies circulating the blood. Uh, your veterinarian will need to confirm a positive test by results test results by sending a blood sample to a commercial laboratory for different tests that's known as a western blot. If your cat is confirmed to be FIV positive, your veterinarian will assess his overall health by performing blood work and full diagnostic workup. Blood tests typically include a complete blood count, uh, a CBC and a serum biochemical profile. Uh, a urinalysis will be performed to assess kidney function and screen for urinary infections. So treatment, because uh, FIV infected cats can live for years with no symptoms, treatment may not be necessary until signs suggest that the disease is progressing. So secondary infections are common in the advanced stages of the FIV infection due to the progressive weakening of the immune system. Uh, issues can vary from mild to serious and will be treated on a case by case basis. Certain issues that can occur with advanced FIV, such as dental infections and tumour development, may need to be managed with surgery. So cats with severe dental disease may require full mouth extractions. Um, this is in order to alleviate the pain caused by gingivitis and other oral issues. Um, so long-term management. Cats with FIV infection need to be monitored by you at home and through regular visits to your veterinarian. This will help detect the development of secondary infections and other manifestations of the disease. Progressive health issues such as gradual weight loss and increasingly frequent surgery 
infections may be signs that the FIV infection is starting to affect your pet's quality of life, so you do have to take that into account. Uh, in general, however, the earlier that the FIV is detected, the better your cat's chances are for living a long and relatively healthy life. So there are my sources, and thank you for listening. Okay, let's do a round of applause. Questions for Athena. Questions, comments, like I had a cat with this and this happened, or anything like that? Anybody? Um, you know what she said about uh, a cat with FIV and it has secondary infections, and that might be what kills the cat rather than the FIV? That sounds exactly like HIV. The people with HIV never really died of HIV. They died of bacterial infections or whatever that m most of us would fight normally, but their immune system is suppressed, so then these other things can flourish. And the SNAP test is a very interesting thing, and you said the SNAP test detected the antibodies yeah. against the FIV, and those little SNAP tests are amazing. And there's been, I think the last time I looked up their, uh, the number that has been uh, manufactured, like it's something like a billion have been made. And there's a vet tech in Frank, Frank <coughs> Indiana, him and I want to make a video of the SNAP test because everybody knows the instructions that you get, blah, 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 right? That's boring because it'd be interesting for you to know what's happening underneath and why certain things happen. And so I actually am gonna make a video with him because then he can talk about in the clinical setting what he does and then I, I'll have him talk, but I'll tell him about the underpinning. You know, there's a matrix and there's certain time you wait and a color develop and all that. And it's amazing how many different kinds of SNAP tests there are. But I have the scientific, scientific article of the guy that invented them. And he talks about what's happening underneath, which most people can't explain, right? You know, you do the SNAP test and blah, blah, blah. But what's actually happening underneath is, you know, the interesting thing. So him and I have to get together. So, yes. Okay, thank you. Mr. Walsh, come on up.